Hi there, welcome to the Kenny Veach M Cave Mystery. Today we're going to be learning more about the information and reactions from people earlier on in the case, roughly around the start of 2016 onwards, when it came to Kenny Veach going missing and the mystery of the M Cave, trying to locate it and understand what happened to Kenny in general. It's very interesting to learn about the early days considering the case wasn't as well known back then, wasn't as popular as it is today with the introduction of TikTok over time and other channels covering the case, bigger ones, it's been put on the map. And of course, with me, my channel consistently covering the case, I am the only person on this entire planet that has created the most videos compared to everyone else on the case. The mystery is ever evolving and there's always twist around the corners. Make sure to stick around today to see what you can learn and find out within this interesting forum page of what I've come across. I believe it might be called Web Sleuths. Now, I don't agree with the term sleuth. I find it a very cringe-worthy title and it tends to be aimed in the direction of true crime and even the Dylan Rounds case appeared on Web Sleuths at some point but it looks like it does apply to simple missing person mystery cases like with Kenny Veach. And that's what I want to look at today and analyze and go over it. Granted, some of the information could well be outdated and regurgitated, but it's not their fault. It's what they knew of at the time, right? And there was only like two pages, but one of the pages, there was even exploring abandoned mines and unusual places channel video linked onto the page. So it has catched up in recent time. It will be interesting to see if people have done their research on the case and if I've been acknowledged as well because, you know, when it comes to news articles, when it comes to big YouTube channels, nine times out of ten they do not do their research on the case and they don't even credit me either. It's very disappointing, it's very disheartening, but let's just see what's to offer today, right? And even if some of the stuff could be considered old information and discussions, ideas and theories, it could be stuff that's been long forgotten about, right? Things we've never seen in a certain way or questioned certain outcomes to Kenny and possible findings along the way, right? When you look back, you might pick up on things that just faded into obscurity. So we bring it back into the light and compare to what we now know of within this case and with the investigations that have come along the way too, with people hiking. So bear with me today, okay? It's gonna be interesting. Welcome to those that are currently here in this live premiere. Share your thoughts, opinions, and reactions in the live chat box. If you want to leave your thoughts, questions down below in the comment section, make sure to do so, and I'll respond back to them when I've got time. You'll also find a pinned comment by me in the comment section, and that's if you want to support this channel in alternative ways, there are ways to do so. If you simply want to catch up on the recent videos of mine and the official Kenny Beach playlist where all the latest breaking news and past research can be found, top right corner of the screen, click on that I symbol and you'll be able to find it. On top of that, if you click on that I symbol, you will be able to catch up on last night's video, which was somewhat disturbing and creepy regarding a possible buried body being found, the possible links tied with Kenny Veach. Make sure to catch up on that video. You don't want to miss out there. In addition, for some people who may have seen my community post, there was a very, very creepy mystery lurking in the background which needs to be addressed and highlighted. Separate situation. I'm going to be doing coverage on that when there is more time. I know football is on later and I do need to catch up on that. So maybe tomorrow or the day later, I'll do the creepy video. Be on the lookout for it. The reasoning as to why I didn't want to upload it today was because I thought it would clash with last night's video with the thumbnail, the theme and the topic of tunnel, caves, mines, exploration. I didn't want it to be too repetitive in case people thought it was the same thing. They're completely different, believe me. And this one, what we will be looking at is a lot more bone chilling than anything beforehand, right? 
So I will get to that when there's time and when there's a bit of a break in between. I was also considering not uploading today to allow the previous video yesterday to grow a bit more, but from how that was going and answers I've got online, you might as well just stick to what you're doing. Um, maybe with the exception of if you see exponential growth within something, you just let it grow and not be overshadowed by the next video. But that's not the case right now. As we know, it's a bit of a slow burner. People with some videos eventually come across my channel. It would be great if a lot more came across. I mean, do I have a goal? Do I have an idea, a concept? Well, my thoughts, my vision, what I would like to see is on average 11K views per video, providing the videos are of some quality and wealth, such as with information. I'm reaching nowhere near that, but it would be nice to see that 11,000 views per video. That would be very satisfying. When it comes to numbers, right, not going in too deep, but there's, only, there's certain numbers I like, right? Do you know, like how people will have their lucky numbers or just favourite numbers? Nothing to do with superstition, nothing like that. I, I just like certain numbers. Like, I prefer 10k instead of 11k. The next best thing would be 15k or 18k with 800 just after it. I don't know why, I just like how it visually looks. Let me know in the chat if you have any favourite numbers, whether they're lucky or not, just your preference there. Okay, again, a little bit off subject, but there's no harm in talking along because I'm sure there'll be a range of people watching and you can talk about your own things in the chat. It is a bit more of a casual video today, so we can take it at a slower pace. But once again, I do advise you, if you didn't watch the last video, make sure to do so much higher end video, right? And very spooky. So with that all being said and done, let's just get straight into today with this forum page I came across and see what people had to say back then early on in the case. Here we are, as you can see on screen, we're on the forum page and this was first created, the thread, by Dr. Jones, June 8th, 2016. So that dates back quite a bit. What was going on in 2016 within the Kenny Veach case? Not a lot in comparison to today's standards. Really, no one going out there, with the exception, though, of Sean Horlacher and Jeff Clark being the first ones to explore and search. So credit to them. 2016 was the year when Jeff Clark started going out there and when he experienced vibrations himself, similar to Kenny Veach. But on top of it, experiencing some other strange outcomes like lost time and that was proven through photos, imagery and the timestamps. Quite extreme the time difference between when they were taken yet the distance in mileage was very low and shouldn't have taken that long. Very very strange some of which has already been covered on my channel if you would like to search for that I'm sure you'll be able to find that in the playlist. Okay. Just scrolling down. We've got some of our related posts which we don't need to look at here. So, what's this first foremost? This person, a member, joined 2015. Was that probably through the Kenny Veach influence? You never know. There are some links there, but I won't click on them just yet because it will probably flick me over to other stuff. It does appear to say findthemissing.org cases. That could well be in relation to NAM us or some kind of missing person database in the name of Kenny Veach. And we have looked at the official one there. As for news3lasvegas.com, cell phone of missing hiker found near abandoned mineshaft. That would be in relation to probably 2014 and more specifically the 22nd of November when Search and Rescue went out there up Little Joe May Canyon to the mineshaft where Kenny Veach was seen in his older hike video and that's when they found some of his items, loose coins, etc. I believe it will probably give a bit of description down below so we might as well read that right now whilst we're here. It tends to give a transcript in brief. Las Vegas KSNV Minus 3 volunteers searching for a missing hiker in the Sheep Mountains have found his cell phone up a canyon and near a deep vertical mine shaft. That canyon being called Little Germay Canyon. I don't know why people don't call the canyons what they are, especially if they're named and accessible on the likes of Google Earth satellite imagery. 
I guess how it's worded in some of these articles is no different to Kenny Veach, who couldn't even name them. Very interesting. Kenny Veach, 47 years old, has been missing since November 10th. He told his family he was going to hike in the mountains and planned to return two days later. He has not returned. See, this is the thing. Don't mention about the girlfriend reporting Kenny seven to eight days later, which is a bit odd and suspicious, but more so how it's worded here that Kenny Veach told his family that he planned on returning two days later. Yet how it's been worded other times from what we've seen, it was said that Kenny Veach was going for an overnight stay, right? I guess it depends how late or how early in the morning as to when the person was going and what time in the day the person was returning back maybe the exception of an extra day or two, possibly, but like a short overnight stay. But how it's worded here, two days, return two days later would imply you go there on the day, such as on the 10th, and then two days later, 11th, 12th. That would make it three days in total. But in terms of what's been worded in the past, it was a short overnight stay, which would imply roughly two days or just under one and a half days, right? Just wanted to highlight that right now. What else do we have? His YouTube channel, Snakebit McGee. Okay, I'm aware that there's some people on YouTube that can't even find Kenny Veach's channel. Don't know why, maybe because people expect Kenny Veach's channel to be the same name as his real name, but Kenny Veach's username on YouTube is called Snakebit McGee. And there's a link as example. Now it should work that link and if it doesn't, maybe it's outdated or there's some kind of error and I believe the link below is probably to his hike video. This is kind of like setting the scene, the introduction to everything and Dr. Jones appeared to be quite interested in the case back then. I wonder if Dr. Jones is still around now to hear about the latest updates on the case. Nevertheless, Dr. June, Dr. Jones says, at the time of June 8th, 2016, I have done a lot of looking into this case research. I can't believe I never posted it before. I know I meant to many times. Right, what's going on here? Unfortunately, there is very little MSM information on it. But there is a bunch of stuff on Reddit, social media, YouTube, etc. that we cannot discuss. What? that we can't discuss. So you're saying that there is a lot of information on Reddit, social media, YouTube, public platforms, but when it comes to that type of things, we can't talk about? What? That sounds a bit backwards, that. If the information was private, then it would make sense as to why you can't publicly talk about it. But if you're saying that there is public information, but you can't talk about it now, that makes no sense. And to be honest, back in 2016, there wasn't a bunch of stuff on Reddit, social media, YouTube. There was a bit here and there. You look at it nowadays, it's still pretty scarce. You go on YouTube, you go on to the, like my channel, you go on to J Chuck's SB. Well, things have changed dramatically since. Anyway, the video above is what brought some notoriety to the case. People speculate that he returned to the mysterious M cave and met with some peril. The overwhelming likelihood, in my opinion, is that he pushed himself too far and died from exhaustion or dehydration, misadventure, etc. The second most likely thing would be he disappeared on purpose, but there is only circumstantial evidence to suggest this, and in my opinion, it's much less likely. He was known to handle wild animals like snakes. He was bit by a poisonous snake once. True. And to push himself to extremes whilst on his hikes, things like not eating or drinking for as long as he could to test himself. That's true. The mine shaft mentioned in the story above that his cell phone was found near was searched. He was not in there. Exactly. See, this person has common sense already compared to some of the people we've come across and news articles out there. No mention about suicide yet. But you never know. But what I'm interested in here, how it's been brought up, that this person at the time believed that either Kenny Veach pushed himself too hard and he succumbed to the environment, etc. I understand that. Misadventure, some kind of accident, falling off, a rock hitting him, you know, things like that. I get, I get that. But then 
If it wasn't that, this person believes that maybe Kenevich staged his disappearance. That's very interesting because people had that idea and concept back then when there was hardly any evidence to suggest that. You fast forward on from 2020 onwards when I came about and started my coverage and doing research, there was material, there was forms of evidence to highlight and reinforce that possibility that Kenny Beach staged his disappearance. For example, the scent leading up to the mine shaft and reaching an end. Maybe he turned back the way he came and was picked up by someone else to leave his items out there to say, yes, these are Kenny's personal items. This is Kenny's scent. As you can see, he was out there at the time. And he's not returned back, so he must be out in the desert. But if Kenny Beach got picked up by someone else in a different vehicle, he could be living a new life, a new identity. You never know, right? Then with the CCTV footage of 2018, obviously long after this, these people wouldn't know about it, probably. 2018, looks like Kenny Beach in a Veach family-run healing store. The sister, Debbie Veach, etc., Broken into in recent time of the year of 2024 once again. Some people are wondering if Kenny Beach is involved once again. I'm not too sure about that, but at least in the 2018 footage, there appeared to be a person breaking in and they looked pretty similar to Kenny Beach. And then you had the further, you know, material to suggest as evidence Kenny being alive in 2022 when a call was made from Kenny's Facebook account towards the sister-in-law, Susan Veach, right? So it's interesting how people back then had the ideas the theories and what else they could have been laughed at at the time or seen as not enough circumstantial evidence, if not any at all, times have changed since. That's interesting. Anything else mentioned here? So it looks like a bit further on, another person comments in 2018, so that's a bit of a jump ahead, doesn't it? Anyway, Dr. Jones says, I wish one of the shows like 48 Hours or 2020 would do a segment on this case. I'd like to know more about his finances. He was trying to sell his house at the time and about his vehicle when it was found. He mentions in a video that he would leave some drinks and a cooler in his car for when he finished his trip. I wonder if they were there. Do you know what? That's a fair point that we've never really talked about it because if you look at it this way, if Kenny Veach was suicidal, likely he wouldn't have took a water cooler with him with beer, right? Because Kenny Veach in the past said he always looked forward to returning back to his vehicle to drink a nice ice cold beer, right? He looked forward to it. There was a reward at the end of the hike. If Kenny was going out there one last time on November 10th, he wasn't anticipating much because all he had in his mind was death. There'd be no need to take beer with him. Um, unless it was one last drink before setting out there, that could be the exception. But more so, the beer was there for when he returned back from his hike as a reward. If Kenny Veach wasn't planning or intending on returning back, then there would be no reason to have beer in his vehicle because there would be no anticipation for waiting for it because he wouldn't make it to that point. So that's a very good point mentioned here by Dr. Jones. I'm probably going to screenshot it just for now because I think it's, it's a very simple point, but it's interesting. Now, we did hear a bit of talk about Kenny Veach's vehicle as for when search and rescue got on top of it, they looked inside. It was said that they didn't find anything of interest, nothing suspicious, nothing out of the ordinary. But was meant was anything mentioned about the boot, the back end of Kenny Veach's car vehicle? Was there any beer drinks inside? No mention of that. My argument, what I'd put across is, if there was a water cooler full of beer cases, whatever you want to call it, drinks, something Kenny Beach would anticipate and look forward to at the end of his hike, well, it seems more likely in a situation like that, well, so it must have happened to him on his hike because he never got to make it back and he probably would have wanted to. But there's always that exception that things could have been left in the vehicle from previous hikes. It depends from when he last went out there. I mean, okay, his video that was uploaded on his channel, the MK Hike and the Search, that was posted in October, roughly a month just before he went missing. Did he do any hikes, smaller ones in between that? I'm not too sure, personally. But we do know in October he did have a water cooler, he did have his beers in the back of his boot. And although people could say, well, we didn't see that, we did. 
later on in 2021, I think, or 2022, around that, when Sharon Pilgrim, the supposed girlfriend, ex-girlfriend of Kenny Veach, actually ended up uploading some unreleased footage from his October hike of 2014 when he made it back to his vehicle when he was exhausted, dehydrated, and trying to drink a beer, and you saw the water cooler and all of that in its glory. So hopefully that answers Dr. Jones' questions there to an extent. But now, we move on to a few different members on this forum page who have got some things to say. And this is of January 14th, 2018. So it just goes to show that in 2016, there wasn't that much interest, but there probably was a form of common sense and stability back then. Before, you could argue, all the crazy stuff started creeping on into the case. Whether people see that as a circus show or not. I'm just making observations. But from 2016 to 2018, supposedly nothing happened. Well, it depends where you were looking because Jeff Clark in 2017 did go back out there, went into the mineshaft and also came across the Crystal Skull, which opened up a completely different deep end mystery within the case of Kenny Beach and M Cave, becoming its own sub mystery and much more. So there was that. Okay. 2018, town, I would really like to know what happened to Kenny, Sleufster, joined 2004, wow, January 14th, 2018, his Nam Us case, we've seen that, what I might do though, do I need to save it, I don't know, sometimes when it comes to these databases, it's hard to get the link off, so... There's the link to the NAM Us database of Kenny Veach, in case you were wondering, and hopefully it still works because it might be an old link. Now, it's probably common sense, but just as a heads up, the last time I checked, I believe the Dylan Rounds NAM Us database profile, it has since been closed. As you would expect, just wanted to give you a heads up there, so it does actually close. That's good to see. Now, Sleeve. Uh, says it says he called his ex-girlfriend from a movie theater and said he was going camping no 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 sleuthster you've got that wrong okay it's time for war like ref to clear the scene okay so from the nam us report it was reported the night before kenny veach's disappearance somewhere in las vegas nevada kenny veach and his ex-girlfriend sharon pilgrim went to a movie theater to watch a film and then at 2300 hours i believe they parted ways then i believe how it was worded furthermore the following day, at around 6 in the morning, when Kenny Veach woke up, a text message was sent to, such as the girlfriend, about heading out in the morning time to start his hike. Okay? He didn't, he didn't call, he didn't text the girlfriend, ex-girlfriend the night before. No, they were together in real life. And then later into the night, parted ways and went to wherever they live separately. Then in the morning, Kenny Veach texted the ex-girlfriend, Sharon Pilgrim, about him being ready to head out, right? Anyway, January 21st, we've got Blair, active member, joined 2013, says, It is interesting this wasn't covered all that extensively locally. I'm in Vegas, though it wasn't fully ignored by the media here, and it certainly does seem like Red Rock Search and Rescue made thorough efforts to find him. No, 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 no. He didn't disappear off a main hiking trail or even near a main hiking trail. He was a highly independent and not super safety prone wilderness hiker, forging through remote mountains in a desert terrain without GPS, according to what I'm seeing. Yeah. I'm not a hiker, so this is just my own, maybe misguided opinion, but I'm kind of impressed they found anything given that. Though Kenny gave a pretty detailed description of exactly where his start for the search for the MK started, so they were surely able to pinpoint that and search from there. Unfortunately, it appears that his girlfriend at the time of his disappearance believes that suicide is also a viable option in the case. Uh-oh. 
According to comments made on his YouTube channel Snapemit McGee, Kenny seemed like an interesting and likeable guy in his videos. I'm sure he's greatly missed, and I hope his friends and family find some peace. Well, as a heads up, Kenny Veach's friends and family, for most part of it, have done less searching for their own family-related or friend member, Kenny Veach, compared to volunteers and strangers who've actually put more time and effort and risked their lives looking for Kenny out there. So that really does put things into perspective, Blair. So some interesting points what Blair mentioned, but at the same time, there's a few maybe mistakes made, so I'll just go through that to clear things up, okay? So the bit about it not being covered extensively, locally speaking. That's true to an extent. The odd news coverage, as we saw, K3 News 2014, that was about it. A little transcript from what the daughter, Vicky Veach, had to say at the time, hopeful that Kenny Veach would be okay out there with the experience he had, etc. And was it Dave Cummings, the commander or one in charge of the Red Rock Search and Rescue at the time, giving his thoughts on the matter? But, you know, at the end of the day, um, if you're talking about locally, yeah, not reported much. If you're talking about long term, absolutely. If you're talking about in general, not just locally, yeah, it did die out. It wasn't as well known or well covered. It, it was down to general public, random people from around the world that decided to cover the case and then put the, put the case, the name on the map. And that's how things started going from there and more people being inspired and interested by the case and some even wanting to head out there themselves to record and find further mysteries within the case directly or indirectly. So there has definitely been a chain effect there. But the bit about saying that the Red Rock Search and Rescue made a thorough efforts to search him. No, no, I think that's a bit exaggerated, to be honest. You say that Red Rock Search and Rescue crew made a thorough effort in searching for him. They couldn't even be asked to explore the mine shaft. Years later, Scott Natal, a random stranger at the time, decided to head down there himself. He didn't even use any safety gear. He climbed down the ladder. Years after Kenny Veach's disappearance and years worth of wear and tear on the environment, the wood, the weathering, and Scott Natal made it look pretty easy. You know, other people have been there and used safety ropes. Of course, people have their own preferences to how they go about stuff. But it just goes to show that the general public can put more effort in when it comes to searching than actual official search and rescue crews, etc. Whether they be volunteers or not, general public people who normally wouldn't do that stuff end up doing a better job than the ones that, that their job is to, you know, search. To put it into perspective for further context... At the time, in 2014, around 22nd of November, Red Rock Search and Rescue crew sent a camera down into the mine shaft, And that's what they used to determine that Kenny Beach wasn't in there. Was it good enough confirmation? No, it was a lazy approach. But thankfully, other people in the future, from then on, such as in 2016, 2017, the likes of Jeff Clark, he went into the mine shaft and confirmed Kenny wasn't down there, but did indirectly capture a crystal skull, its own mystery, of course. Then in 2021, possibly 22, Scott Natal went into the mine shaft himself. Maybe more than once, possibly, or at least attending the area of the mine shaft more than once. And he confirmed Kenny Beach wasn't down there. In 2018, in between it all, like how this comment is pointing out, in 2018, at the time, a group of unknown guys went in there themselves, accidentally breaking the ladder, the brace, etc. Well, maybe the brace, more so the ladder, the rungs. They didn't find anything, but they didn't say Kenny Beach was down there. So there was a level of consistency that Kenny Beach wasn't in the mine shaft, and that was over some years. But when it was most needed answers in 2014, Search and Rescue did a half-hearted attempt there with the mine shaft. And as for further on and other areas, well, to say that they've done a thorough search would be somewhat incorrect, Blair, because when it came to some, you know, general public and people interested within the case as time went on, tried reaching out to Search and Rescue, they couldn't provide any details or any information or any photos of their report on the case. Very tight-lipped. 
that's not exactly helpful, is it? And considering the Kenny Beach case has become a cold case and now it comes down and rests to the general public to try and solve it themselves, they should have somewhat of a right to know about details and extra information, even if it was just those exclusively with being boots on ground in the area because they have pro proven a lot of value in the case and all different types of angles and perspectives and a lot of time put into it and risking their lives. They should have the right to see some of the photos, some of the information by Search and Rescue so we can understand the original story and the original investigation. But because they're so tight-lipped, it seems like they've not done that much. So I think it's a bit of an overstatement to assume or to presume that Search and Rescue have done a thorough search. I don't think they did. Because there was talks about Kenny Veach's scent near Pine Nut Road. Why did they not search that? Why did they not go further there? Right? And as well, not like it's Search and Rescue's fault, but if the girlfriend actually reported Kenny Veach missing much earlier and not seven to eight days later, maybe there might have been a bit more success. Or maybe that scent might have gone further. You never know, right? So that's one thing that needed to be definitely addressed there. Okay? The bit, though, where Blair says that I'm kind of impressed that they found the spot given, the mineshaft area, considering that Kenny gave a pretty detailed description of exactly where his start point was for the search of the MK started, surely they were able to pinpoint that and go from there. But this is the thing, right? Kenny Veach didn't exactly give key descriptions. He didn't even know the name of some of the locations he was at, and supposedly he's an experienced hiker, and yet he couldn't even name them. He even named Sheep Peak as Gas Peak, and that's completely wrong, because Gas Peak is in a completely different direction south. So I wouldn't say Kenny Veach did us a favour there when describing it. Um, and to be fair, the reason why Search and Rescue were likely able to track Kenny Veach is because Kenny Veach originally said where he was going to go, even without the inclusion of his hike footage, as we saw in the past. He said to the, his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend of what he was going to do, where he was going to go to an extent. And then upon going down Jermay Road, you find his vehicle. OK. And then from there, tracking his scent which will obviously lead to the mine shaft and they didn't go any further they didn't go beyond that because his scent ended at the mine shaft maybe because they were too late to getting there and when kenny was reported missing right so there was some obvious hints and indications on top of it he his phone was found near the mine shaft so if his phone did ping they could have probably tracked kenny veach's phone ping right so there are some obvious indicators there that can be used as prompts along the way. But for Blair to say that this is where Kenny Veach started his hike, that would be absolutely incorrect. The hike does not start at the mineshaft. The hike starts way back down at Joe May Road. And then you encroach onto Little Joe May Canyon on foot. The reason why it's very important to state that is if you was to measure the distance and more so the time it would take to get out of your vehicle parking down Joe May Road to get to the mine shaft as what's been described as the starting point at the hike, that takes three to four hours. That is quite a bit of time to get from point A to point B and to say the mine shaft is the beginning of the hike? You're excluding, you're ignoring three to four hours worth of getting from the road area to the mine shaft. That's quite some time to ignore. If you put it into people's mindsets that the mine shaft was the beginning, no one would anticipate the three to four hours it would take to get there before you even begin the hike. And that could screw a lot of people over. That is why we need to be very serious and as specific as we can when it comes to distance, time, hike routes, because it's a very dangerous place out there. And those that have hiked out there themselves, as experienced as they may be, they've struggled at times and they can appreciate and understand that it's not for the faint of heart and it is a remote area. The slightest of mistake can end your life, right? You need to know what you're going into and what you're going to face. So once again, to reiterate, where Kenny Veach was at the start of his hike video was not the beginning of his hike. It took him maybe three to four hours to get to that spot to then hit the record button, okay? My question is, in general to people, I wonder why Kenny Veach didn't you know, start his video at Joe May Road like how Sean Horlacher did when walking up, 
you know, Kenny Veach didn't have to record too much of his hike from getting from his vehicle to the mine shaft, but why did he not record the early part of getting to the location? I wonder. Why did he use the mine shaft as a starting point? Is it because he intended on that for being a memorable place for the future, a beacon point, a reference point for when he does just happen to disappear? Was it set in place all that time? A month's difference of when he went there compared to later when he went missing out there? We've got to take that into mind, okay? Was there anything else to be acknowledged here? Um, no. But the, the bit about there where it says, unfortunately, the girlfriend claiming suicide. The girlfriend is a mental health profession in the field, and yet she even made the joke of, don't pull a Robin Williams on me when saying that to Kenny. Not enough intervention done. We've not seen enough proof or documents of medication or lack of it or prescriptions or doctor notes or reports or, you know, confirmation that Kenny Beach was actually depressed or had issues like that. Okay. Uh, supposedly that's the case from what's been said in the background, but... Sharon Pilgrim, the girlfriend, the ex-girlfriend, said he may have committed suicide. Not that he did, but he may have. What we need to remind ourselves, Blair, there is absolutely zero, zero evidence when it comes to bones, when it comes to bodies at this moment in time. No blood, no gun, no spent bullet casings, none of that to suggest suicide or death. There's actually more evidence and material to suggest he could be alive. Now, of course, with the recent video, what we looked at, that was giving my thoughts on a matter of another situation with a different outcome. Now, Frank, explained by the mine, said he was going to go back to a mine to undig a possible grave and see what's there. Well, that's a waiting game at this moment in time. I just want to cover this for now. Take in mind, in all fairness, these comments are back in 2018 and I wasn't even around then covering Kenny Veach, but I was doing research on and off. So these people aren't going to know everything at the time, granted, but there's a bit of common sense that's probably lacking, okay? June 24th, 2018, Karis, former member, joined 2012. Let me just check one thing. Active member, um, joined, new member, former member. So obviously these people are no longer a part of the forum page. Maybe they're not even active online. Shame, but never mind. Karis, June 24th, 2018. I definitely think he was suffering with bipolar, with psychotic features, and he killed himself. Right, so we're, what, wannabe psychologist? Let's just see. I came to that conclusion by, he was definitely manic on his videos, pressured in speech, unable to stay on topic. Father killed himself. There are some correlations there mental illness, genetic component, verbalised detailed plans regarding suicide, no one will find me, having detailed notions about ending one's life, genuinely speaking, indicate the likelihood of doing so. Bipolar tends to result in creative things he made, bizarre thinking, selling his house with him, and it certainly meets that criteria. Frequent high-risk behaviours, his hiking certainly meets that criteria. Going into the desert with little water also qualifies. Oh, no. Dehydration can result in hallucinations, psychosis, etc. Seeing the M cave might be just that. Claimed he walked up a 9,000-foot mountain to sleep and the following morning claimed to climb down. That's 18,000 feet. Somewhat grandiose. Suddenly quitting a 17-year-old 17 year career impulsive tendency to mismanage money is a hallmark of the illness the notion that a t-shirt is a major deal is not connected to reality another thing he saw he made the thought it would be the next thing was a wooded toilet paper holder illogical thinking peculiar as well on his video he says when he found a rock out in the desert his conclusion that it indicates that human beings have been there is so irrational Oh, no, 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 no. I think we'll have to go back over this. Everybody watching right now, do not go anywhere. His girlfriend stated he battled with thoughts of suicide for some time, so that obviously is the case. The notions that his body began vibrating intensely sounds more like a delusion or break with reality. Oh, so are we just ignoring what Jeff Clark experienced then? A completely different hiker? Hmm. Pressured and rapid speaking as huge components of a manic episode. 
Back to risk taking, no GPS on him, easily falls into that category, as does bring in a small amount of water and food whilst planning to be in the desert for an hour upon hour, certainly at risk. In his video, there are no shots of being very high in the air, looking down all terrain when he sets up to film his hike on his flat ground. What's that got to do with mental illness, man? When he sees the animal, forgot which one, he concludes that the animal can probably hear him talking and then pulls the camera back to where he is at a distance. Incredible. You can't even see the animal. The belief that an animal like can hear from miles away is not a conclusion based in reality. I'll be genuinely honest. I do actually remember this comment, but I think it was elsewhere. Anyone watching right now, do you remember that where someone was talking about Oh yeah, you had that big horn sheep on the mountain further away and Kenny was claiming that it probably could hear him, so that's not exactly normal. Based off reality, he's quite detached from it. And we were like, what the hell's going on here? Is this some psychologist? Is this Dr. Todd Grande coming on in under a different account? I genuinely remember seeing this, but not on this website. Nevertheless, we'll just continue reading. His hopes after quitting his career was that he would be a smash on YouTube which would support him. That's incorrect. Selling t-shirts and toilet paper holder is certainly a questionable conclusion. It, it wasn't directly because of YouTube. Kenny Veach was trying to get into the shark tank situation, so this person's ignored that. No job financial stresses are definitely a component of suicide. Helpless hopeless. His girlfriend did state he was having financial problems. She also stated he described suicidal thoughts for many, many years. But also when you look online and his behaviour, he's mentioned some very positive things too, which counters it. His recent search history was about suicide. No, it wasn't. It was about help me, help me, which could be interpreted in many different ways. He clearly indicated that if he did kill himself, he would never be found. Out in the desert makes sense. Oh yeah, but Kenny Beach decided to take his phone with him and some coins and left a trail of breadcrumbs. Yeah, and that led to searchers reaching the area where Kenny Beach supposedly was at. Yeah, that's definitely going to a place where you don't want to be found, even though you leave items behind to be found. That's a complete contradiction. His cell phone being found laid on the ground nicely appears more like placing as opposed to a dramatic drop. What? We don't even have any context or evidence that Kenny Veach's phone was nicely placed on the ground. That's one of the key questions Jeff Clark a uh, fellow hiker, has been inquiring about. We don't know as to what condition Kenny Veach's was, phone was in. If it was placed down nicely, maybe it's done intentionally. If it was dropped, it was done abruptly, and maybe something happened to Kenny out of his control, possible foul play. But it was never mentioned. It was never talked about publicly. Even the search and rescue haven't even bothered revealing the details or the condition of the phone. So I don't know why this person's jumping to conclusions without any proof. His truck being found eradicates the notion that he was just wanted to disappear and start over somewhat eradicates that, possibly. Incorrect. There are hungry wild animals out in the desert, lines, and guess what? Not a single hiker has come face to face with one, and they've been out there several times. The M cave has never been found, although folks have searched for it. What? Wait, 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 wait. This is, this is 2018. What is this person on about? There's hardly anyone searching. The illness can often... Be become more problematic with age, maybe. The quitting the job might be fired as a result of deteriorating performance, congruent with the illness and aging. Tendency to be articulate is high. Creativity is a component of mania. As far as we know, not really a long history of relationships. Relationships are very difficult as far as the illness goes. Or you could just simply say relationships, depending where you are, where you're stationed at, and who you live, and what time in life, and uh, the generations nowadays, that can vary in limit as well. He did have an adult daughter, but no mention of a previous marriage, but, you know, would have been with someone to be able to create offspring. He was handsome, promiscuity when younger is another hallmark of mania. What? Grandiosity is another component of the Ill illness. Many examples mentioned above. The notion that he wanted to sell his house with him being a part of the purchase price comes with the house. Watch his videos linked above. That certainly meets a rational, bizarre, grandiose, disconnected with reality, somewhat impulsive and delusional financial difficulties or attempts to get rid of stuff prior to killing self. Dying of natural causes might result in more likelihood of being found. They searched right away. No, they didn't search right away. Pull that out of your rear end. They did go down the hole right near the cell phone. No, they didn't. And found nothing. A fall in the crevice is a possibility, but in my opinion, the above mentioned. 
Jesus, man, what's going on here with the passage of time girlfriend did come to suicide conclusion. She wasn't even confident that was the case. She suggested she wasn't even for certain. She described him as a lot of fun mania. Oh my, my God, what is this? What is this? Posted in 2018, claiming many people have already been hiking out there. No, there was only about two to three people then, at least from what we know of. As for the search and rescue, they didn't go out there and go into the mineshaft. They sent a flimsy camera down. As for the phone, it was never revealed publicly as to what condition it was in, whether it was generally placed down so it protected the perfect little covering little glass. We don't want to see damage to it. No, there was none of that. We don't know if it was smashed. We don't know if it was chipped. We don't know if it was placed or if it was chucked. It's never come out. It's never been talked about. The talk about Kenny Veach wanted to make it big on YouTube is a load of bollocks. He created videos on YouTube as a last-ditch desperate attempt as a form of a Shark Tank submission that the actual TV show series called Shark Tank, the equivalent in the UK being Dragon's Den, in which you have multi-millionaires, maybe billionaires, investors, where you go onto the show, you promote a new idea or invention, and if it's good enough, people will you know, buy into that business, give you money, and you can grow from there. Kenny Veach and his creative mind at the time thought, maybe that's my final attempt, my last chance. Okay? My God, how it's worded here. We're going to go through it bit by bit, just to put it into perspective. Okay? Because it's important to do so. Where do we begin first? Right. So you say you definitely think he was suffering with bipolar and psychotic features. Is there enough proof then? So the conclusions are pressured in speech, unable to stay on topic. I mean, when it came to him hiking out there, he was able to stay on topic. It's just that at times he stuttered. But that could be down to pressure in having to prove to the audience, the people online that, you know, went against him and said that he hasn't got any proof. So he felt determined to go out there. But you know, pressure was on his back. He talked a big game online, so he had to try and provide evidence. And then when it was getting towards the end where he couldn't find it, maybe he was worrying, thinking, what am I going to do next, right? As well, there are certain areas within the hike route where it's very unexplainable, some odd occurrences, strange experiences and encounters out there, such as the key hotspot with the different shaped caves, the cave that Kenny Beach walked past and said, it, it's d -d -d deep and it's d -d dark and it's, it's almost like a place just like here, and then turns around and says, and then you've got caves like that looks like doing i'm not going up there and then starts moving quick it's as if he felt worried maybe he felt like he was being watched i mean you're out there alone you've had a strange experience in the past with a cave that vibrated you weren't prepared then you're a bit scared you come back you can still anticipate that scaredness in case of the uncertainty of the unknown of what could happen next kenny veach did stumble and stutter a bit though when he was doing his house tour, but if he is a bit of a passionate individual, sometimes just a normal person, you don't have to have mental health issues to just stutter. You could stutter because you're either speaking too fast compared to what you're thinking on your mind, or maybe vice versa. Um, there's a lot of things to say and you stumble on your words. You're very passionate and high energy, um, high tension, high moment, and you know, you're trying to get everything out in one big burst and go. There's a lot of energy and you might make the odd mistake, just like how other people do. It doesn't mean to say they've got an illness. So I bet, you know, dramatise that. Anything else? Detailed notions about ending one's life. Well, it wasn't exactly detailed. He just basically said, if I was to end my life, no one would find me. That's not detailed. That's pretty vague. What else? Bizarre thinking, selling his house with him with it. No, what it is, that's being creative. It could be considered a bit creepy, a bit outside of the box, but if you do have money issues and you can't afford anywhere else for whatever reason, you may like your home, you may like the area, and you want to hold on to it for as long as possible, so you think outside of the box. Okay, didn't work out. People may have been very suspicious of the offer at the time. I wouldn't blame other people, but... You know, if Kenny Veach was so passionate about where he lived and really liked it and there was no other options, then, you know, sometimes desperate measures, desperate actions. Doesn't mean to say that you've got an illness, man. Dehydration can result in hallucination psychosis after seeing the M cave might be just that. So you're assuming that Kenny Veach didn't have much water, he hallucinated and saw supposedly a cave. 
with that time with the vibrations, not exactly. And to be honest, let's be real. Kenny Veach pushed himself more than ever on his recorded hike when trying to locate the cave. He didn't find it. Did he have any hallucinations or psychosis from lack of water and being exhausted? No. And that was proof. We saw it. He was, he was visibly exhausted, but he was not delusional at the time. We saw that, right? Claimed he walked up a 9,000 foot mountain. It's grandiose. Probably simple mistakes. He did make mistakes. He couldn't even name certain locations. He named the wrong location after something else. Um, as for the heights of the mountains, I think there might be a bit of talk around it to explain, but I can't remember that where it was mentioned, but I think it might have been taken out of context. Next bit. Suddenly quitting a 17-year career. Impulsive. I don't know. I don't know about that one. But one thing which this ignores yeah quitting a 17 year career but from what the sister-in-law susan veach said from someone she knows there was another job set up for kenny veach to take up but it just didn't happen so that's one thing that needs to be acknowledged what's this the notion that a t-shirt is a major deal is not connected to reality another thing i saw he made what a t-shirt what's that got to do is that to do with one of his Shark Tank submissions? I don't remember that. I remember the toilet paper. I remember that Galola bear or something. But that was for Shark Tank, not YouTube in that sense. What else? Claimed that he found a rock in the desert and came to the conclusion that some other human beings have been there. Irrational thinking. That's incorrect. Kenny Veach said a rock Khan. Not a rock. Not the rock. The wrestler, but a rock Khan, which basically means several rocks stacked on top of one another, manually man-made by another person, right? That's why Kenny Veach came to that conclusion. We saw an example of a rock Khan in, uh, was it, Scott Natal's video, an actual rock Khan, big one, beacon point. And even when J. Chuck Vlogs went out there, he even came across one, two, in different areas. So it's not a rational thinking. This person's jumping the gun there. Girlfriend stated he battled with thoughts of suicide for some time. Notions that his body began to vibrate at the time of coming across the cave from a delusion or break with reality. Well, from the looks of it, the likes of, you fast forward on to 2016, Jeff Clark out in the area, different spot, but on the way to the hike of Kenny Beach, felt vibrations. Was Jeff Clark delusional or away from reality at the time? No. You might get the likes of Jay Silverheels that are like, you know what, Jeff Clark, you need to be locked up in a mental asylum. You're just disgusting human being. But for the most part of it, Jeff Clark at least tries at times, attempts to be, you know, realistic with thoughts and prefers the facts over, you know, very weak material or claims. So for someone like Jeff Clark, especially at that time to feel vibrations, it doesn't link with Kenny Veach being delusional. I wouldn't say that. You say rapid speaking, manic episode. I think the sister-in-law said Kenny Veach, the way he talks, it's just how he has always been and it wants to do with being manic. What's this? Back to risking it, no GPS. Oh, that means the person's taking risk and they have illnesses. What about skydivers? What, what about the extreme sports people? What about people that do such extreme activities out there besides hiking? Do they have mental illnesses as well? There seems to be much labelling in that direction. Anything else? Um, the animal. Yeah, when Kenny Beach saw that bighorn sheep from a distance claiming that it probably could hear him, he was joking, he was laughing, he was not being serious. For this person here to be very serious in labelling someone as having mental health issues and illnesses, yet this person takes it out of context and doesn't understand a joke, yeah, maybe this person needs to look back and reflect. Kenny Beach was not being serious when it came to that bighorn sheep in the mountains, okay? bit about being a smash hit on YouTube. Incorrect. This was all to do with the Shark Tank submission. Girlfriend's financial problems, yeah. His recent search history was about suicide. There's not a proof, there's not enough proof to suggest that. It implied it could be, but not proof to guarantee that. What was found on Kenny Veach's search history was searches such as help me, help me. 
That could mean anything. Help me with my life. Help me financially. Help me find a job. Help me clean the house. Help me sell the house. Help me hike. Help me this. Help me that. It doesn't always have to be about suicide. There is clearly an agenda here down the psychological route. He clearly indicated that he did kill himself. He would not be found. And out in the desert makes sense. Yes, but he took items with him. So he was tracked up to a certain point. If you truly don't want to be found, you won't take anything at all, right? Kenny Veach supposedly took a camera with him. Even though the girlfriend said he didn't, the girlfriend also said there was a missing camera for taking photos only. So a suicidal person like Kenny would take that with him to take photos. What would be the point if he's not on returning back? And yet there was a clear conversation, text-based, covered on my channel, documented between the nephew Hunter Veach and Kenny Veach saying, I've got a surprise for you. I'll show you when I get back. So he had intent to return back to show something to his nephew, right? The bit about saying his Kenny Veach's phone found nicely placed on the ground. There's no proof of that. Absolutely no proof to say that it was placed down nicely, nor was it dropped dramatically. We don't know. It's never been revealed. The truck being found eradicates the possibility of wanting to disappear or start a new life. No, it doesn't. It actually further reinforces staging a disappearance because you're putting evidence out there, personal possessions, to prove that that's where you last was at, and even the scent as well. And if you did get picked up by somebody else, it's not your vehicle. Your vehicle's left back in the desert, so people wouldn't always think to that conclusion of wanting to disappear because Kenny Beach didn't want people to think like that. So, yeah, cause misdirection as a possibility. You're going about saying there are hungry, wild animals out there, yet not a single hiker that's gone out there since has been harmed by wildlife, for the most part of it, with the exception of Jeff Clark, the snake charmer. Let's not forget about that. But other people that have been out there, and even those that have heard footsteps in the dark, in the blackness, and have been stalked, did they get attacked? No. Was it creepy? Yes. Did they capture any lions, mountain lions? No. I've not seen a single hiker with footage capturing a mountain lion out there. Maybe the sound, but no visual representation. So it's lacking. MK has never been found, although folks have searched for it. Who? Who though? You posted this in 2018. Who do you know was hiking back then besides, besides Sean Horlacher and Jeff Clark? I wonder. There weren't that many. Anything else? To be honest, phew, not really. I think we've gone through most of it. And, um, yeah. What's this? July 25th, 2020. Bumping up case. M Cave and the unexplained disappearance of Kenny Veach, Nevada Magazine. That's likely what we've already read before. Chattering Birds, Nevada Magazine. I think I read that out. It probably told the same old regurgitated story of once upon a time a hiker gone missing and suicide presumed. Yeah. Not much there. So from 2018, was it, let's just see, from 20, oh, was it 2018 to 2020, pure silence. How can it be that silent when in 2019, Sean Horlacher went out there on one of the more explosive deeper end videos, a full on hike, and even the first full on investigation of the area where Kenny Veach dropped clues as to, oh yeah, an area just like this on ground level, just like here. And Sean explored it, investigated it to what to the best he could. Fell ill afterwards, whether that be a coincidence or not. But claimed that it was a covered up cave. Possibly a groundbreaking new mystery and claim in the case. It's not been mentioned on here. So from 2018 to 2020, silence. That is crazy. And obviously in 2020, I got involved at the beginning of 2020. No mention or reference yet. So the date of this one by Sony12 joined July 2016. This was posted in 2021. So it, once again, we've leaped ahead in time within the case and on this foreign page, really not much going on in 2020 or 2019. It's pretty flat, to be honest. It's kind of disappointing, if I'll be honest with you. I don't know why no one's bringing anything up because 2020 onwards was when everything started you know, happening, all the crazy stuff and the consistency, the peak of Warlight Ref for uncovering these key videos and analysis and not one mention yet, no credit at all, disappointing. But Sony12 says, 
I have wondered if this supposed M cave he was talking about in his videos even exist. He never officially showed it in any of his videos. He was always just making videos about trying to find it again. I heard he was going through a lot of personal problems and I wonder if the M cave was just a suicide story he was developing. So, to start with that last point made by Sony 12. Suicide? Tying it with a cave? What's the point of that? That would be like contradicting the situation. You're setting a story up about a possible cave out there, which kind of gives a vague description of where you would expect to find Kenny if it's tied with suicide. The whole point of Kenny Veach's concept originally was not to be found if that's what he was going to do out there. So I think Sony's point there is probably not exactly valid. But to refer back to the beginning of his sentence or sentences, how... Sony claimed that, you know, Kenny Veach didn't show the M cave in any of his videos with an S. Now, in terms of, like, a viewer as of right now who was to go on Kenny Veach's channel, there is only one video, one video to do with hiking and searching for the cave, which was a failed trip because he wasn't able to locate it. He tried looking for it. He couldn't find it. So he went back out one more time, but like on an unrecorded hike because it was never uploaded to his channel and presumed missing from there on there. The very first time Kenny Veach came across the cave unexpectedly was when he wasn't recording and he wasn't anticipating anything. Now questions can come with that. Did Kenny Veach have a camera with him at the time? Could he be bothered to take a photo or not? Or did he make up excuses? Or was he truly unprepared on that occasion, because take in mind, there's been photos and bits of footage of Kenny in the past on hikes, so why not this time round? Seems a bit, what, convenient in some way, just by using the excuse, oh, I'm, I'm just not prepared. But for Sony to say that in any of Kenny Veach's videos, not once did he show the M cave, well, does Sony know something other people don't? I mean, yes, I do remember, or at least I, I feel like I remember seeing multiple hike videos on Kenny's channel. Whether they were to do with the MK or not, that's a question there. But it's just interesting how this person's wording it as videos when you look at Kenny's channel and there is only one hike, one recorded one. Sony also says he was always just making videos about trying to find it again. He wasn't always, and he wasn't making lots of videos trying to find it. He went out once, didn't record it. He went out a second time, did record it, but was unsuccessful. Then he went out one more time, and it was unrecorded. So a total of one video out of three hikes. Yet this person's claiming he was always making videos trying to find the cave. If this person is onto something and knows of past videos or they're just bullshitting and exaggerating with degenerative language as like what humans like to do nowadays. Okay, let's move on. June 11th, 2021 by Once Upon a December well-known member. Well, they're a well-known member. Will they have a wealth of knowledge? June 11th, 2021. Something seems so off about this story. The phone detail and mineshaft really seem eerie to me. Also, here are more photos of Kenny, likely from his Facebook account. Yes, the one on the left with the cowboy hat, that is Kenny Veach's personal profile picture on Facebook. The photo on the right is a photo that was posted sometime in 2013 in a woodland area and the arm that's on his back is actually of the person to the left of him, which is the nephew Hunter Veach when they went out together on a hike. This person says, I think suicide seems plausible considering the circumstances. Child support cost, no income. Child support? I'm sure Vicky was almost like a, literally a fully grown adult by then and of an older age, able to support themselves and um, married to someone as well. I don't think child support would be an issue there. To say no income, well, it's been said that Kenny had another job lined up in the background, said so there may have been some opportunities there. It's interesting how this person is a well-known member if that's on this website in general, okay. But if it's specifically to do with a well-known member 
on this forum to do with Kenny Veach, well, they're lacking in knowledge and they're jumping down to the regurgitated story of suicide. It's funny how a lot of people will jump on the suicide bandwagon and not a single person can provide solid, concrete evidence to say that's what he did. He might have said things in the past which could be interpreted in certain ways. You could check a search history by Kenny Beach and it says need help, but that could mean anything, really. Do you have proof that Kenny is dead? No. Do you have proof that suicide's on the table? No, because you don't have death, you won't have suicide either. Right? Moving on. September 7th, 2021, doggy bag. Is it filled with anything? I guess we'll find out. Another well-known member. I'm looking into any NAMO's unidentified remains in Clark County, Nevada that are remotely possible to match Kenny. So far, I have these sorted by county. National Missing and Unidentified Persons, April 12, 2020. January 30th, 2020, 2017, 2016, 2015. This one is particularly compelling. The clothing matches exactly. Well, if that's the case, I guess what I'll have to do is get a screenshot and we can take a look at that, possibly. Uh, get off, you bastard. Now, I'm just surprised no one's mentioned any relevant research to the channels on YouTube, such as mine, etc. Let's move on. Kiri, well-known member, 2021, responding to Doggy, saying, unfortunately, the one you like for it is so different height wise. Five body Kenny Veach was five eight. I don't think they can be the same person. Oh, okay then. The last two, the twenty twenties, have very little info but could be Kenny. Do we know if there's DNA available for him? If so, they'll run it against those two of their pop onto code is so weird he's not on the network. Right, so Clark County, what, missing people and bodies, remains being found and trying to figure out. If that's what it's getting at here, that remains have been found in the past with missing people, but identities at the time weren't identified or confirmed, then it could apply to Kenny Beach if it's roughly in the area. But fast forward onwards, the family, the sister-in-law haven't mentioned anything about being you know, contacted by authorities that Kenny has been found, his remains, so it's probably irrelevant now, but I will check those links out when I do get time, and I can always add points on. Excellent write-up. Oh, no, is that the person in agreement with the um, analysis of Kenny and his health? And, and then bumping for Kenny also. I may be mistaken, but I saw, or truthfully, I didn't see a NAMUS or a Charlie Project page. I'm missing them. I may need an afternoon pot of coffee. Well, it's all there. It's not gone anywhere. Very first link is Namos. I don't find him on that. Right, whatever. Thank you, my brain needs a job. Whatever. What's this? They did go down the hole right near the cell phone. What's this? Dog Loyalty, new member, December 12, 2021. This is an interesting statement. I'd appreciate a link to this evidence. My theory is everything you stated above is true and that he left the phone next to the mine shaft and the video so investigators would know where to find his body. And yet, if that was really the case, it would be a massive contradiction from Kenny Veach considering he didn't want to be found. So, you explain that. This commenter says, It seems to me, due to the lack of follow-up, LEO handling the case thinks this might have been his resting place. I haven't seen any evidence that suggests they searched a very vertical mineshaft by evidence. I mean, shouldn't there be a video or something from this search down the shaft in his case file? I think they may have made the assumption and gave up. Now, the thing is, dog loyalty, it's been said officially that they sent a camera down, but they didn't send an actual human down, so it is lacking. But dog loyalty, if you did your research, already by 2021, Jeff Clark went into the mineshaft 2017, and maybe approaching the time of when Scott Natal, 2021 onwards, went into the mineshaft as well. And in 2018, when the group of unknown guys went there too, but that was only released as for footage in 21 onwards, okay? So there's that. 
technology has come a very long way in the past six years. To be honest, it might have done, but it's caused more problems nowadays than it's worth. Technology has improved, but it's also added to more pressure, responsibilities, confusion, issues, and too much reliance on technology in which when it does malfunction, what do you have there? And as well, even if technology is good and useful when it comes to searching for Kenny Veach, it can be a pain in the arse like how the hikers have described. SB Vegas Adventures, Jeff Clark, they've had malfunctions with equipment not working properly, cameras or whatever, lights turning off by themselves when they're near mines or mine shafts. Weird things going on out there. We've got Mitch One, well-known member, December 15, 2021. Oh, what's this? Finally, research has been done. A reference has been given to another person within the case. No disrespect, but who's it? Frank, exploring abandoned mines in unusual places. The high chances why this video was shared is because of the reach. It got nearly or over a million views. Of course, it's going to appear on the search bar, the search terms, top of the page, so people can find it more easily. Unfortunately, for someone like me, who has been more dedicated, more consistent and more vocal on the case using the hashtags, the correct titles, thumbnails, everything done correctly and yet people struggle to find my videos, it's absolutely fucking abysmal, okay? You can blame YouTube to an extent, but then you could also question humans, the human race, strangers, those who have never heard or seen my channel before but are very interested or hungry on the case and you ask yourself, how can they not find or see the videos? Is it that bad, my channel? Is it that bad, YouTube? What the actual fuck is going on? It does piss me off so much. But nevertheless, let's just see what's mentioned here. This YouTuber believes this to possibly be the cave and it does have the M shape to it. Obviously, can't be absolutely certain this is the cave Kenny was referring to. They show it at the mark 1 minute 9. So I did do an analysis of this and there was an updated video as well to do with visiting back at the location. Yeah, it does look like the shape of an M. It would be good to be able to locate it on the maps and, if possible, boots on ground footage too. Now, let's go on page two. How modern do we get? December 15, 2021, Dog Loyalty. I believe there was an M cave. I believe Kenny saw it originally and planned to go back and find it again. I believe he tried to find the M cave again and when he failed to find it on his second search, Due to his mental state and cyber bullying, he claimed to be going back a third time to search and document his exploration. But in reality, he only planned to document his last exploration. What explorer plans to go search and document without taking his professional camera? Hold on, hold on, hold on. So this person isn't saying suicide. The individual is saying that he only planned to document his final journey out there, but went missing and didn't upload it. Well, how do you know he planned on documenting it then? You know, that makes no sense at all. You go on about his mental state and cyber bullying. What? Where's the proof Kenny Veach was bullied? Okay? Being bullied could consist of um, someone telling you to KYS and die. That. Someone giving out harmful insults, nasty words hurtful words, all that, blah, blah, blah. People kind of pressuring somebody to go back out there and search for the cave, that's not exactly bullying. You can say it's peer pressure, but it's not exactly bullying. I mean, you could say where people demand for me to go boots on ground. I might as well say, that's bullying. Oh, I'm being pressured now. Emotional blackmail, emotional manipulation, right? But I'm not that sensitive, so I don't jump to that conclusion. So I think that's a bit of an incorrect line to mention here. This person says, as a veteran, I have been in his position and the complete feeling of loss of power in his own life and being trolled online. One solution would address all of the challenges he was facing. Well, let me tell you something. I wouldn't say Kenny Veach was trolled that much. Arguably, the people that have put time in investigating in the case and covering it and keeping it alive to spread awareness of the case have been trolled extremely more than Kenny. And as for example... You know, I've been attacked the most. Not in the most severe way, but I have been attacked the most. Guaranteed. Never mind. 
What else? One solution would address all the challenges he was facing. I suggest the most cutting-edge technology should be used to map and explore the Nevada MS and eliminate the possibility that Kenny committed suicide there after he uploaded his last video. He, he didn't commit suicide on his last video because he made it back home to be able to upload it, right? That's incorrect. And based off Kenny and his phone and his whereabouts and him texting, he was alive in the morning of the 10th of November 2014. So that's incorrect there. What this person's trying to get at. Now let's move on. 2023. Damn, this is getting modern now. By this time, I was covering the Dylan Rounds case for quite some time. So I was already away from the Kenny Veach case, as you know, because things started flattening out. There were some ideas to cover on and off, but the hunger left within humans. And at times you had people begging for it to be returned back and covered, but then people just disappear and run away. You know, people demand or want something, and when they get it, they complain or they just don't show up. I mean, what can you do about that? Nevertheless, let's see what Martine had to say. Was the date the NAM was created the same date he was reported missing? How come it was a month when he was only supposed to be gone for two days? See, this is the thing. Take in mind that Kenny Veach wasn't reported as missing immediately. Seven to eight days of delays, even though the girlfriend claims to have done it quickly, which is a complete lie. Then I guess it being processed, filed, that can take a bit of time. So yeah, delays, of course. Tower, well-known member. 2023, January 3rd. This is a difficult one to sleuth because the UID bodies found in relatively populated areas would not likely be Kenny Veach. I hike extensively in this area. Do you really? The vastness of the desert area in which he disappeared is difficult to explain or imagine. It would be incredible luck if someone happened to come upon his remains, especially because there seems to be evidence he was trying to conceal his final resting place. No, there isn't. People go missing and aren't found in much smaller wilderness areas. I'm guessing his disappearance will remain a mystery forever. Well, that's a weak mindset you have. 2023, you posted this and you've not even bothered doing research on the actual Kenny Beach case. You've not done any research on the CCTV footage or the phone call made by Kenny. This is where bollocks comes on in. This is where years have passed by and still humans can't be fucking arsed to do research. It's ridiculous. The only form of leniency I would truly understand within misinformed humans would be the poor reach of my videos. If YouTube blacklisted me or if other people found it very hard to find my videos because it was a popularity contest with the disease-ridden, cancerous, big channels that regurgitate the same old fucking shit all the time, then I would understand this situation of being misinformed. But if it's just down to a lack of research done, then it's pathetic. And you know what really does help the situation to prevent these issues? If there was more awareness and more people sharing the videos. All it takes is for one person to share the video in a different direction, in which then the next person does the same, and it's a chain reaction. But if humans aren't bothered in doing that, how do you expect anything to change. I might be a one-man army at times, but I can't do everything, as you know. But god damn, what is going on here? God damn. It's disappointing to see. Who's this? Chattering birds. Hi, I don't know what day he was reported missing, but it would have been prior to the date his number's profile was created, in my opinion, because I've seen it take anywhere from one or two days. Too many years for profiles to appear in NAMUS after someone goes missing. First, the information has to be submitted to NAMUS, and then I don't know what the process is before NAMUS decides whether or when to post it for public view. Many cases are never submitted to NAMUS. Some are submitted, but are never approved for public view. Well, I've not come across that yet. Thank you, I wasn't sure. Um, so I take it there's no real updates yet. Martine, are you dipsy or what? Have you done any fucking research on this? Jesus Christ! Have you never heard of YouTube? How can people not know updates? I've done over nearly 400 videos! My God! This is crazy! What do you have on here? November 29, 2023, we got... However you say that name... Verified certified fraud. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant, that. That's what we need. What's this? Reposted. What happened to Explorer who went missing near Area 51? Incorrect. It wasn't near Area 51. No new information. You are oh, ignorant, arrogant human. If you go to YouTube 
if you type in Kenny Veach, if you click on newest search terms, you will find the videos. To say there is no new information is absolute bollocks, okay? This is pathetic. January 31st, 2024, and that's it. Not a single mention. And before people take this out of context, it doesn't all revolve around me. But there is absolutely no credit for Jeff Clark. No credit for Sean Horlacher, the originator investigator. No credit for J. Silver Hills. No credit for Mystery Hikes. No credit at all for, you know, J. Chucks or SB. Why have they not been credited? Why has no one searched those videos? Because to be fair, okay, the people that have actually been out there, boots on ground and searched, those videos as a whole are more successful than mine. And in a way, you'd expect that because it's boots on ground, real investigation, time and effort put in, them risking their lives and people hear about it and watch those videos. And yet even they haven't been credited. So if you look to me as an example, if I'm not credited... Or, no, if you look at those people out there who are more successful in ways, if those people, those channels, those videos, which have got more views, if they're not credited, if people here are that ignorant not to acknowledge it, then what chance do I have, right? The only reason why exploring abandoned mines in unusual places was credited here, no offence, is because he's a bigger channel. He's got more reach. He's got over a million views. So his videos will show up more easily. So people are more likely to see that before they see the smaller channels. It's, it's a very sad situation, but that's where it is. So that appears to be it. My God, that was bad. So we've transitioned to this dodgy camera angle because I think it's quite fitting for the outcome of this video at the end of it. What did we actually learn? That there are still ignorant people out there that don't bother doing research on the case. Seriously, YouTube is one of the biggest platforms out there when it comes to videos, missing person cases, mysteries, all of that. And yet majority of the human race on this earth don't even know the research in the Kenny Veach case. Because let's be bloody realistic, okay? We've got our group, we've got our community, okay? That's all fine, that's all good. But if you're talking about the majority of the human race that have engaged or at least heard about the Kenny Veach case, I would say with absolute confidence and certainty that the majority of the human race out there, regardless of the country, if they have at least heard of the Kenny Veach case, it's very likely that the majority haven't bothered doing research. They just look at the first story that shows up, the easy way out, look at the easy, big, popular channel which tells a regurgitated story, the end, and claim that as a fact. These are the most ignorant bastards I have come across. It's pathetic. So bad that the whip might as well be pulled out right now. And I'm trying to figure out where it's at. Just give me a second. I don't know if it's here or not. Ah, there we go. Okay. Comes up time, I don't know. Just put that there. Give me a second, give me a second. Just set the camera up. I had to move it just for a second. Things have got that bad, and I'm that disappointed that we need to whip the cobwebs off, okay? All I would like to say is, if you have no idea what's going on now, we have drifted, we've parted ways from the Kenny Veach case. Move that aside for now. We need to whip the misinformed, the ignorant humans away. See, it's a fud. It's a fud. It's not even a slap anymore. There you go. You want more? You want more? You want more? Come on! Get some more. Yeah! I'm very disappointed, okay? Hopefully you enjoyed the video, or at least enjoyed that bit then with the whipping. Feel free to share the video and we'll see what happens next time. There might be another forum which we can look at if I haven't already. And I might be incorrect. Maybe it's already one I've covered. If not, and it's the one I'm thinking of, there's a chance that there might be a bit more relevance within the case and references made. Time will tell. Still got that spooky, spooky video to make. 
just got to pick the right moment so it doesn't overshadow you know the previous or the current one we'll give it time but be on the lookout for it and once again um just before we do get if you want to catch up on my last video which was very creepy highlighting the possibilities of a body a buried body being found and it could link to kenny veach be sure to click on the eye symbol top right corner of this screen. You'll find it there along with the Kenny Beach playlist. And on top of that, if you want to, feel free to check the link down below in the pinned comment section if you want to support this channel in different ways. With that all being said and done, I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Good night.